Okay, let's do an example here involving compression of air in a piston cylinder device. So we have an insulated piston cylinder device containing air. Starting off at state one, uh, the pressure and temperature at state one are 290 degrees Kelvin and 100 kPa. And then we do boundary work. We do boundary work on, or some kind of work, presumably boundary work, and compress the air, raising the pressure, raising the temperature, okay? Final pressure, P2 is 800 kPa. Now, what do we want to find? We want to find the minimum, minimum specific work, lowercase w, w per unit mass, the minimum work required to compress the air from 100 to 800 kPa adiabatically, okay? No heat transfer insulated. So what's the minimum work required to compress the air to raise it up to a pressure of 800 kPa, all right? Okay, so let's get started here. Let's get started. Analysis. So minimum work. When you hear terms like maximum efficiency, max DLP, the maximum efficiency of something means that, or maximum COP, maximum coefficient performance. When you hear that you want to minimize the work, which is similar to maximizing the coefficient of performance, irreversible process should pop into your mind. Reversible processes are the most efficient processes. They produce the most work for a work producing device. They consume the least work for a work consuming device. So if we want a minimum work, so min work, immediately to me that implies reversible process. So this compression process we have needs to be reversible. Of course, what that really means is no entropy is generated during the process. Okay. So let's write the entropy balance for our air. So our control volume here, let the system be the air. Okay. So here's our system, it's the air. So let's write the entropy balance for the air. Let's see if this gets us anywhere. So delta S, and I'm gonna do this in lowercase. I'm gonna do everything, well, I guess I'll do it in uppercase. Yeah, I'll do entropy, not specific entropy. So S balance, Delta S from one to two is equal to the integral, the sum of the integrals of the heat transfer over the interaction temperature over the process plus S gen over the process. Now the piston cylinder device is insulated, so we're going to assume an adiabatic process zero. Adiabatic. I'll write that in the assumptions in just a moment. And minimum work implies reversible process. So S gen is zero. Reversible. So what this implies is delta S from one to two is zero, which also implies the change in specific entropy from state one to state two is zero. This is a isentropic, isentropic process, isentropic process. Reversible, adiabatic, therefore isentropic. Let me write this up in the assumptions. Assumptions. Uh, uh, isentropic, uh, yeah, uh, reversible, 
or if you like, isentropic. I'm sorry, reversible, let's just leave reversible, and then adiabatic. Reversible, adiabatic. Okay. Now let's also apply the energy balance. Let's apply the energy balance to our air. Because we're interested in a work, a minimum work. Well, Q minus W is equal to delta E, which is equal to delta U. Why is it equal to delta U? Because I'm gonna neglect changes of kinetic potential energy. No heat transfers, so that's zero. And so I get the work, and I'm gonna write it, well, I get the work is equal to delta U, or if you like, the specific work from one to two is equal to the change in specific internal energy from one to two, okay? So the expression, so let me write right over here, uh, isentropic process, And W from one to two, in other words, our minimum work, because it's an isentropic reversible adiabatic process, is going to be equal to delta U from one to two. Okay, so let's just leave this equation here. So I need to find the change in internal energy from state one to state two. Or if you like, U evaluated at temperature T2 minus U evaluated at temperature T1. Okay, so that's basically what we need to find. We need to find internal energies at state one and state two, or we need to find delta U from state one to state two. Now, let's look a little bit carefully, more carefully at the problem statement. I want you to find the minimum work, and we're going to do it in one of two ways. Two ways. We're going to assume constant specific heat to find the minimum work, and we are going to then, after that, assume variable specific heat to find the minimum work. Of course, the true value is variable specific heat, where the constant specific heat value gives us an approximation, gives us an approximation for the minimum work. Okay. Now, uh, note I do provide K which is CP over CV, 1.4, and I provide a CV value for you to evaluate the specific heat, 0 0.73, okay? So you're actually given specific heat at constant volume, and you're given a K to use for the constant specific heat calculation. So let's do part A. So W1 to 2, by the way, I got rid of the negative sign here. Um, what I mean by, uh, I guess I'll put the negative sign there. I guess I want to be a little careful there. So, okay, so let's calculate using constant specific heats, the minimum work. So A, constant CP, CV. So the minimum work is W1 to 2. W1 to 2 is equal to delta U, which is equal to CV delta T. Or if you like, CV T2 minus P1. Now remember the process here is an isentropic one. So if I have a TS diagram, temperature, specific entropy, 
And here are my isobars. So here's P1, here's P2. Uh, we start off at a temperature T1, and we have, of course, a certain S. And the idea is we're going to go vertically up from state one to state two. Okay, that's what the process is. We're going to end up at a temperature T2, of course. Isotropic process from temperature T1 to T2. Okay, that's what the process looks like on the TS diagram. So we, uh, we know CV. I know T1, what is it, 290 degrees, something like that? Yeah. I need to know T2. Let's find T2. Let's see here for an isotope process, one to two is isentropic. That means I can use an isentropic property relationship. T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1, one minus one over K. So there's our isentropic property relationship. No, I know T1. I know the pressures, initial and final, and I'm given K. I have everything in this equation. I can immediately solve for T2. Let's see here. T2 is equal to T1. P1 over P2, 1 minus 1 over K. Let's see here. T1 is 290 degrees Kelvin. Uh, I'm sorry. P2 over P1, not P1 over P2. Uh, P1 and P2 are 100 and 800 kPa. 800 and 100 kPa, so we're pressurizing it. Eight hundred, one hundred, and we're taking that to the one minus one over what's our k value? One point four. One point four, and let's find T two here. So what's T two? T two is equal to five hundred and twenty-five degrees Kelvin. 525 degrees Kelvin. 525.0 degrees Kelvin. 525 degrees Kelvin. Great. So I know temperature T2 now for this isentropic process. Oh, all I need to do is plug in. Let's see. CV is 0 0.73 kilojoule per kilogram degree in Kelvin. And then I have 525 minus 290 degrees Kelvin. The Kelvins cancel out and I get kilojoules per kilogram. And the minimum work then, W1 to 2, actually uh, there's a negative sign. I guess I better keep my negative sign. All that's going to happen is it's going to indicate that it's worked on the system, and I'm immediately going to flip the sign on, okay, to indicate that is the work on the system. Let's see here. So, minus 171 kilojoule per kilogram. Minus 171 kilojoule per kilogram. In other words, in other words, In other words, W min equals minus W one to two is equal to 171 kilojoule per kilogram. That's the minimum work required to compress the air. Reversible compression, adiabatic, the minimum work is 171 kilojoules per kilogram to compress the air up to 80, 800 kPa. All right? So that's for constant specific heat. That's for constant specific heat. 
So in fact, right over here, I'm gonna write that result. So for part A, W min is 171 kilojoule per kilogram. So I'm gonna write that right over here. We're gonna compare our result for variable specific heat net. Okay? So let's do variable specific heat. So I'm gonna take this equation and get rid of everything involving constant specific heat. Still the same process, still the same process, but now we need to find U at state two using our reduced pressure stuff, okay? So let's see here, we have U delta, negative delta U, which is negative U2 minus U1, which is U1 minus U2, which is U evaluated at a temperature of 290, degrees Kelvin, and then I just have U2 right here, all right? That's basically what I got. Let's, uh, let's look up U1. Let's look up U1 here. So uh, U1 is U evaluated at 298 degrees Kelvin for air, and I go to my IGB table, IGB table, Let's see here, air IGB, 290 degrees, 206.091, 206.91, sorry about that. 206.91 kilojoule per kilogram, okay? So I've got U1 right now, that looks good. I've got U1. Now, what about U2? Well, remember when we have variable specific heats, we have PR2 over PR1 equals P2 over P1. So this implies PR2 equals PR1, I don't think, uh, let me go over here. Let me go over here. I got plenty of room on the other board. In fact, I need to turn this thing off too. So let's go over here. We wanna find it for variable specific heat now. I forgot to put no change in kinetic and potential energy on my assumptions, please put it on yours. Okay, so variable specific heat. So recall uh, for isentropic process, we have PR2 over PR1 is equal to P2 over P1, which implies PR2 is equal to PR1, P2 over P1. Now I've got these pressures, P2 and P1, 800 and 100 kPa. Once I have PR2, I can go into a table and extract out internal energy at state two. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. In fact, maybe I should be a bit specific here. U2 is equal to U evaluated at PR2. Okay, that's basically what we're doing right now. All right. Okay, so let's see if we can find PR2 and then back out the internal energy from tables at state two. Let's see here, let's look uh, PR1. That's gonna be PR evaluated at so PR1 is PR evaluated at T1, which is 290 degrees Kelvin. So let's see if we can look that up. Let 
Okay, nine, 290 degrees, PR. Let me increase the size here. There we go. Maybe a little bigger. There we are. 1.23, 290 degrees, 1.23 is PR. 1.23. Okay, and that's from table, what, B, B11. That's from B11. See, it says up here in the header, for delta S equals zero, that's what you use, reduce temperature, reduce uh, specific volume and pressure in these columns for, for isentropic processes. Okay, so let's calculate PR2 and then we'll back out what U2 is. So we got uh, 1.23, it's dimensionless. And then we have the ratio of the temperatures, I'm sorry, pressures. So 800 kPa and 100 kPa. And I get eight times 1.23. And I get 9.84. All right. So PR2 is 9.84. By the way, what temperature does that refer to? Um, T2 is T evaluated at PR2, which is 9.84. Let's see if we can eyeball the temperature in the IGB tables. One point, let's look for one, I'm sorry, 9.84 in the temperature, ta in the uh, IGB table. Nine, Here's 9.68, here's 10.37. So we're somewhere around 520 degrees. Maybe a little bit, uh, maybe 522. The exact value for temperature, the exact value for temperature is uh, 522.4 degrees once you do a little interpolation between these two data points. So T2 is 522 degrees. And this is interpolated from B11, okay? And of course, U2, which is U evaluated at a reduced pressure of 9.84. There's internal energy, uh, 374. 381, we're a little bit closer to the 374. So it looks to me like around 375, 76 kilojoules per kilogram. So the exact interpolation is 376, 376. Three hundred and seventy six kilojoules per kilogram. That is U2. That is U2. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it right here, 376. Okay, we have U2 for this isentropic process. So I now have U2, 376 uh, kilojoule per kilogram. Check, that's done. So now we have um, 206.91 minus 376. Uh, kilojoule per kilogram. Let's see what we get. So I get negative 169. Point 0.1 kilojoule per kilogram kilojoule per kilogram. So the minimum work required, the minimum work required, variable specific heat, the actual value for work min is going to be 169 kilojoules per kilogram. So this implies work min is equal to minus work one to two 
is 169.1 kilojoule per kilogram. So part B, work min is 169.1 kilojoule per kilogram. The more accurate one, provided you did your interpolations correctly, is part B, variable specific heat. Part A, very close. Very good for back of the envelope calculations, estimations. So this represents the minimum work required to compress a insulated cylinder filled with H2O, I'm sorry, filled with air from some initial temperature and pressure to the final pressure. The final temperature is about 520 degrees Kelvin, okay?